let's understand the process of urine formation and concentration of filtrate which is one of the most essential parts of the nephrons that is there now understanding the formation of urine first of all urine formation occurs through th three stages first is filtration the second is reabsorption and the third important stage is secretion let's understand the three stages one by one the first stage which is the stage of filtration occurs in the glomerulus and the renal capsule now here what happens is nearly 1100 to 1200 milliliters is filtered per minute and of this filtered blood which is one fifth of the blood that is being pumped by the ventricles of the heart is there now this process occurs in three layers what are those three layers first is the endothelium of the glomerular blood cells the next is the epithelium of the bowman's capsule now this epithelium of the bowman's capsule is also known as podocytes from the podocytes, you have uh, minute spaces which are known as filtration silt through which the process of filtration takes place. And the third is the basement member which is attached between the two which is the endothelium of the glomerulus and the epithelium of the Bowman's capsule. Be between that you have the basement layer. So all of these three are responsible for the process of filtration. This process requires a lot of uh, reduction in the filtrate and therefore this is also known as ultra filtration so where does ultra filtration takes place the ultra filtration takes place in the glomerulus region and the blood is filtered so finely that all of it except proteins pass to the bowman's capsule so the only thing that passes from the blood to the bowman's capsule at this stage is proteins now the glomerular filtration rate is around 125 milliliters per minute that means nearly 180 liters of blood is being filtered on a daily basis so a very very high capacity that is seen for the glomerulus which is present in each of the nephron so we have a structure of nephron and there are millions of such nephrons present within the kidney now Towards the distal convoluted tubule and uh, the region where you have the efferent arterioles, there is the J, J, GC which is the juxta glomerulus apparatus and this juxta glomerulus apparatus is important sensitive region which is as we said the modification of the distal convoluted tubule and the efferent arteriole system once there is the fall in the glomerulus filtration rate which is the gfr what happens is the cells of the juxta glomerulus region activates and this re leads to stimulation of blood flow in the glomerulus region so there is a stimulation of the blood flow in the glomerulus region and finally it brings back the filtration rate to normal for the glomerul glomerulus filtration rate okay so the next work that we see is reabsorption now where does reabsorption takes place there is 180 liters of blood that is filtered on a daily basis by glomerulus. However, the urine that passes is just 1.5 liters. So there is lots and lots of reabsorption that occurs. This reabsorption occurs through the renal tubules. Now, what are the things that actively reabsorb and what are the things that passively reabsorb so in the case of passive reabsorption we have only the nitrogenous waste that is there however when i say there is active reabsorption this includes reabsorption of glucose it re includes reabsorption of ammonic acid uh, it includes reabsorption of sodium ions so ammonic acid uh, ammonic acid then you have sodium ions uh, that are reabsorbed in the case of active reabsorption passive reabsorption only for nitrogenous waste and then 
Water is also reabsorbed passively only in the initial segment of the nephron. So those are the reabsorption process that occurs. However, there is an important process which is secretion. Now secretion is the tubular cells actually secrete hydrogen ions, potassium ions and ammonia into the filtrate that is there. This is secreted by the reason for the secretion is to maintain the ionic balance and uh, the acid uh, the acid base balance of the body fluid. So in order to maintain the acid base balance and the ionic balance of the body fluid, there is secretion of hydrogen ion, potassium ions and ammonia into the filtrate in the region of DCT or the distillated convoluted tubules, the distal convoluted tubules. So there are three processes I repeat again in urine formation the first is filtration which occurs in glomerulus and after this happens it is passed into the PCT. There is reabsorption in the renal tubule which is the PCT as well as the loop of Henle and finally there is secretion to maintain the ionic and the acid base balance in the DCT and uh, this is where you have the ions of hydrogen, potassium and ammonia that is released into the filtrate. So this is the process. Now within the components of the nephron what is the role of each of those. So let's first talk about PCT or proximal convoluted tubule. Now proximal convoluted tubule is composed of simple cuboidal brush border epithelium that is present. The idea is to increase the surface area for absorption. Nearly 70 to 80 percent of the electrolytes and water is reabsorbed in the PCT itself. So 70 to 80 percent reabsorption occurs in the PCT for the electrolytes. Water is also reabsorbed. It helps to maintain the pH and the ionic balance by secreting hydrogen ions, ammonia and uh, potassium into the filtrate. As we have seen, uh, so, uh, the hydrogen ion, potassium ion and ammonia into the filtrate. Now, as we saw this process in the previous slide, the secretion occurs in the DCT mainly, but it also occurs in the PCT here. And as we said, PCT is responsible for most of the electrolyte reabsorption also, the brush border epithelium helps to increase the surface area for reabsorption. The next is the loop of Henle. We have the descending limb and the ascending limb. Now, what is the difference? The descending limb basically is permeable to water. That means, as you can see, the water can move out here, but it does not allow the moving of the electrolytes. However, in the ascending limb, it is impermeable to water, but it is permeable to the transport of the electrolytes as we can see. So sodium ion chloride ion can move out of the ascending limb of the loop of Henle. So descending limb and ascending limb, very, very important. Reabsorption is minimum in the descending limb because of the high osmolarity of the interstitial tissues. However, it increases as you move towards the ascending limb. So reabsorption is technically more in the ascending limb as compared to the descending limb of the loop of Henle. Finally, you have the DCT or the distal convoluted tubule. It is here where there is conditional reabsorption of sodium ion that occurs Along with that, there is reabsorption of carbonates and there is selective secretion of, again I repeat, hydrogen, uh, potassium and ammonia into the filtrate in order to maintain the ionic and the acid, ba acid base balance of the body fluid. Now, finally it connects with the collecting duct. Collecting duct is seen in both the regions. So you have the region of cortex as well as the medulla where you have the collecting duct. So there is part of collecting duct in the cortex and the remaining part of collecting duct which is seen in the medulla. However, the PCT, DCT and the renal capsule is seen only in the cortex loop of Henle is seen in the medulla region. Okay, so collecting duct is where most of the water is now reabsorbed and finally urine is released which passes into small amount of urea as well uh, to keep the osmolarity of the uh, uh, to maintain the osmolarity along with the pH balance and finally there is uh, the selective secretion of hydrogen and 
potassium ions that again takes place here. Now, understanding the concentration of the filtrate is very, very important. Kidney produces urine which is four times much more concentrated than the initial filtrate that comes in. Now, how this process of concentration actually takes place? This process of concentration occurs through a counter current mechanism. Now, how this counter current mechanism takes place is very important to understand. This is the structure of nephron. This nephron is surrounded by the capillaries which are known as vasa recta as we have studied before. Now, vasa recta is the capillaries that surround the nephron and specifically the loop of Henle. Now, what happens is there is flow of filtrate on the two limbs of loop of Henle and how they differ. So, understand I am drawing two U-shaped diagrams here. One diagram is the loop of Henle, the other diagram is the nephron. So, this is the nephron and the next is the loop of, uh, sorry, the vasa recta which surrounds the loop of Henle. So, within the nephron there is the loop of Henle and surrounding that there is the capillaries which is the vasa recta. How it happens? Now the filtrate moves through the loop of Henle in the direction that we are drawing. Okay, So it's just in the direction that we are drawing and in this in the descending limb as we said it is permeable to water. However, the ascending limb is um, impermeable to water but permeable to electrolyte. So sodium and chloride would move out. However, the reverse happens in vasa recta which surrounds this loop of Henle. So, there is a loop of Henle surrounded by the capillaries and in this capillaries the movement occurs in a reverse direction as the loop of Henle. So, just simply the opposite direction and here what happens in, in the ascending limb of the vasa recta, not the uh, not the uh, loop of Henle, what happens is in the ascending limb, you have the two limbs here and here there is, it is permeable to sodium and chloride. However, the ascending limb of loop of Henle was impermeable to water and here it is impermeable to the sodium and the chloride ions and the descending limb here is basically where you have the removal of the sodium and the chloride that is it is permeable to sodium and chloride. So what is happening in the nephron as simple as that the loop of Henle the reverse happens in the vasa recta. So therefore it goes up and from the capillaries it goes down and therefore there is a counter current mechanism that operates within the region of loop of Henle. This helps to increase also the osmolarity. So in the cortex region, the osmolarity is around 300. However, in the inner medulla, it increases to around 1200. And this is where the sodium chloride is transported in the ascending limb of the loop of Henle, which is exchanged by the descending limb of the vasa recta. And this helps to maintain a counter current. So to uh, have a simple understanding again, this is the loop of Henle which is inside and surrounding this loop of Henle there is the vasa recta outside. So what happens is within the loop of Henle the things go in this direction and within the outer region which is the vasa recta the things start to flow in the opposite direction and this creates a counter current mechanism and with this counter current mechanism the concentration gradient of the interstitial uh, medulla is being maintained it helps in easy passage of water and further concentration of urine to nearly four times the initial filtrate that was done by glomerulus now this whole process of kidney functioning requires various organs. So first is regulation through hypothalamus, the next is juxta glomerulus apparatus and finally we have heart. So let's understand these one by one. Hypothalamus releases ADH which is the antidiuretic hormone which is responsible uh, for vasopressin secretion. So vasopressin secretion takes place through the hypothalamus. Now what happens by the ADH? 
ADH facilitates water reabsorption in the later part of the tribule and therefore prevents the diuresis to occur. However, if the body fluid increases, if the fluid increases, the ADH would decrease. As simple as that. Now, ADH also affects the functioning of the kidney uh, because it helps in as a constrictor effect of the blood vessels that takes place. Therefore, increasing the blood pressure, increasing the blood pressure in the glomerulus filtration uh, rate and the glomerulus blood flow. So, that is the role of hypothalamus. The next is the GJA which is the juxta glomerulus apparatus. Now here the fall in the glomerulus filtration rate would activate the juxta glomerulus apparatus or the GJ cells to release renin. This renin would release angio, uh, angiotensinogen tensinogen, uh, 1 and then you would have angiotensinogen 2 that would be released. Angiotensinogen 2 is a vasoconstrictor. So it increases again the glomerular blood pressure and activates the cortex to release aldosterone. Aldosterone now causes reabsorption of sodium and water from the distal part of the tubule and leads to increase in the blood pressure of the glomerular filtration rate and Basically, uh, this whole complex that is formed is known as a renin angiotensinogen mechanism. Okay, so uh, angiotensin mechanism, so renin angiotensin mechanism is being formed. To repeat again, juxtaglomerulus apparatus, there is secretion of renin. Now, this renin releases or uh, helps to convert angiotensinogen in the blood to angiotensinogen 1 and finally angiotensinogen 2. Angiotensinogen 2 is a powerful vasoconstrictor so it increases the blood pressure in the glomerular filtration rate or the glomerular blood flow and therefore creates a complex which is known as renin angiotensinogen uh, uh, mechanism. The next is the role of heart. So through the atria of the heart you have ANF uh, which is released which is the anti natriuretic uh, fluid. Now this basically is a vasodilator. So far we were talking about vas vasoconstrictors which were constricting the blood flow and increasing the blood pressure. However ANF is a vasodilator and it decreases the blood pressure in the glomerular blood flow and therefore checks the renin antinotensinogen mechanism that is being formed. So that is the basic idea how the regulation of kidney functions takes place. Now to summarize again there is three process which is involved. First is filtration, reabsorption and secretion. Filtration starts with the glomerulus. Nearly uh, a lot of filtration occurs in that region and nearly 90% uh, of the reabsorption occurs through the loop of Henle, the ascending and the descending limb. And finally, there is secretion of hydrogen ion, potassium ion and ammonia in the PCT and the TCT. Then there is concentration of urine that takes place with the help of counter current mechanism that operates between the loop of Henle and the vasa recta. So the flow of blood is uh, reversed in the case of loop of Henle and the vasa recta and this creates a counter current mechanism which increases the concentration of urine to four times the initial filtrate and this whole process is being regulated by hypothalamus uh, GJA which is the juxta glomerulus apparatus and heart. Heart releases ANF which acts as vasodilator reducing the blood pressure of the glomerular blood flow and checks the renin, antio, uh, renin angiotensin uh, uh, mechanism that is being formed. However, hypothalamus releases ADH or vasopressin and the juxta glomerular apparatus releases angiotensinogen 2. Both of those are vasoconstrictors that means they increase the blood pressure in the glomerular blood flow and the glomerulus filtration rate. So this was about how actually the urine formation and concentration of filtrate occurs and the various organs responsible for uh, the construction and the dilation. Uh, 
Uh, we would be covering many interesting topics. Thank you.